Canva unwrapped approximately 30 new features this year at Canva Create. And that's a lot of features. So how do I present them all to you? And how do I present them all to you in only one video? <clears throat> Ain't gonna happen. So instead of one video, I'm going to create a series of three What's Hot episodes that will be dedicated to the features announced at Canva Create 2023. And in this video, we are going to focus on 12 new features. 12 features that are all AI powered. So this is 12 AI new features just announced by Canva. Let's go discover them. Fortunately for us, AI is something we have invested in for a long time. Science fiction author Arthur C. Clarke once said that any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. And at Canva, we have always taken this to heart. So let's talk about that Canva magic, starting with the very first AI powered feature presented at Canva Create. I'm talking about magic design. Magic Design is a feature that you will access via the Canva homepage. And this feature is really about avoiding writer's block, okay? So when you're staring at a blank page and you don't know where to start, Magic Design is there to avoid all of that. So how does it work? Well, there are two main entry points to access Magic Design. You can start from the search bar. So from here, what you're going to do is to simply start by typing what kind of design you would like to start. So let's say I want an Instagram travel post. Okay, Instagram travel post. I will hit enter and this is where I will land. Try magic design, inspiring templates crafted with your media. So the first step to using magic design is to insert a media. So you need to start from a photo that you might have somewhere on your computer or already uploaded in Canva. I'm going to use this photo of Diana and I in Madrid, where we had the chance to go last week to attend the Canva Create event. So let's start with this one. I'm gonna click on the image or you can upload your own image as well. And Canva is going to automatically generate some templates for you based on your media. You see my photo is here, it's here, and you have a variety of different templates, I would say, I like this one, that is kind of mixed and matched from existing Canva templates with your media. So how do you fine tune this? Well, the second step is to select the style box right here. So I'm going to click on that and I can add a vibe or theme. So modern, minimalist, holiday, colorful, let's go for colorful. And you can also pick a style. So a style is a combination of a color palette and text combination, like a font combination. So unfortunately at this stage, but this will probably come in the future, you cannot select a style from your very own brand kit. So you're limited to these pre-selected, I would say, styles, but that's fine. I'm gonna select this one right here and then you just click on see results. So now the templates are going to be adapted with this specific color palette and the specific vibe I mentioned, okay? So these are now the results that I have here. I can scroll through them, travel to Bali, it's time to travel. I like this one right here. So the last bit of fine tuning is to add your very own headline, okay? So I'm gonna click on the last button right here and I'm gonna say weekend in Madrid. Weekend in Madrid add to result and these will be automatically adjusted. And now if I click on this style right here, I can start customizing this template some more. And we can see that the template, the original template is based on a template by Mas Ilarf. Okay, so this Canva creator right here will be attributed the use of that specific template, even though it has been remixed, so to speak, by Magic Design. So this is how Magic Design works. If I click here, I will access the design just like you would a normal template, and I can start tweaking some more. Magic Design is going to be available for all users, so pro and free, and it's going to be working on all devices, so mobile and desktop. And then the last thing I want to show you about Magic Design, let's go back to the homepage, because I told you there are two main ways of accessing Magic Design. The first one I told you was the search bar right here. And by the way, I love this new animation right here with all the stars. This is pretty cool. The second way of accessing Magic Design is simply by clicking on the upload button right here. Choose a file. You can upload any file from your computer. Let's upload this photo right here. Okay, beautiful photo of me. Add to a template. So that's how you access Magic Design. And there you go. You are in the Magic Design 
which is still a beta feature from Canva. So this is going to get better. I've seen that there is a tendency to serve me the same templates. So be patient with this feature. It is still the beginning, but I do think it is a useful feature because it really helps you avoid staring at that blank page starting from scratch. That could be intimidating for some new users. So kudos to Magic Design and let's move on to the second new feature. The second new magic feature is called Magic Edit. And this feature will allow me to edit any part of my photo by brushing over a certain object in my photo and then replace that object by another one powered by AI. Let me show you how it works with two different photos that I have right here in this document. The first one is this photo of Diana holding, hugging a coconut water. Okay, Diana loves coconut water and that was her favorite drink when we were on holiday in Bali. So the first step, you will need to select your photo. So click on that photo and then click on the edit photo button right here. Now you should see Magic Edit still in beta. And by the way, Magic Edit is a free feature. So that is a real gift from Canva. This could easily have been a pro feature, but it is a free feature. And so every Canva user will have the possibility to edit up to 100 photos per day using Magic Edit. All right, so I'm gonna click on Magic Edit right here. So it says one, brush over the image. This highlights where the image will be edited. Okay, so I have a slider right here with the size of my brush. So what I'm going to do is to simply brush over this coconut right here. Okay, I'm gonna choose maybe 10. I'm gonna try to be precise like so. You don't have to be super precise. I'm gonna take the plate with me. Just want to edit all of that out, but I'm not touching Diana's hand. That's the difficulty right here. And you see, I, I released my click here, which is okay, it doesn't immediately start the process so I can release my click if I want to and reduce the size of my brush. I'm going to do this in a second, just trying to cover as much of this coconut before reducing the brush. Okay, let's reduce this brush to be more precise. All right, so I think I did a good job with this. When you're done highlighting or brushing over the object you want to replace, just click on continue. Okay, so continue. Now, what do you want to generate in the brushed area? I know that Diana would love to have a little chihuahua. So why not ask Canva to give her that chihuahua? Because I don't want a chihuahua, all right? So uh, replaced by a cute chihuahua. Cute Chihuahua, generate. Okay, so now is where the magic is really gonna happen. Canva is going to generate four versions of this cute Chihuahua. And let me choose between one of these four versions. So there you go. I have my four versions of a Chihuahua here. The third one is a little bit weird. It seems like uh, the Chihuahua has some sort of a spongy texture on his face. Maybe it's new style of Chihuahua, but I like the first one right here. There's still a sponge going on here, but I think this is good. So I'm just gonna click on done. And there you go. My photo has been updated. Let's zoom in on this Chihuahua. It's actually pretty cute. It does have a little yeah, sponge going on right there, but it is cute. And I think this is pretty mind blowing magic or AI technology going on here. Really like that. All right. The second photo I have for you guys is this photo of both of us in front of, don't remember what that is. I think this is Plaza España here in Barcelona. So yeah, I just want to replace this building and put something else. So again, select the photo first, edit photo, magic edit. Okay. And I'm, this time I'm gonna go much faster. I'm gonna do a much poorer job at simply taking the monument right here out of the picture. I want something else, okay? All right, so continue. And I'm gonna write right here, I want the Taj Mahal, okay? I want to pretend this is at the Taj Mahal. Okay, so I wrote Taj Mahal, now generate. Let's see if Magic Edits can reproduce the Taj Mahal behind ourselves. And there you go, the Taj Mahal magically happened with its garden, not just the Taj Mahal, the Taj Mahal and the front garden that you can see in these traditional photos from the Taj Mahal. Now, this is good. This is actually very good. I wish this guy right here cleaning or painting the floor, I'm not sure what 
is doing there was not there. Is there any magic feature that would help me remove that guy? Well, the good news is that yes, there is such a new feature. It's called Magic Eraser, but this one is a pro feature. So I'm telling you that from the get-go, you will need a pro account if you want to use Magic Eraser. Let me show you how this works. Okay, so I have my photo right here. I would love to delete this part to remove this guy from the photo because at the end of the day, went to the Taj Mahal and this guy has no business being in my photo, right? So similarly, you need to select your photo edit photo and you go to your magic eraser right here. Use magic eraser instead? Yes, use magic eraser. I am now in the magic eraser, which has a similar technique. You will need to brush over specific parts of your photo that you want to remove. But this time, if you release your click, the process is going to start. So unlike Magic Edit, where you could release your click when you were brushing over the element, here with Magic Eraser, you cannot do that. If you release your click, the process is going to start. So make sure you do not release your click. All right, so I'm going to start painting over the first the circle right here, making sure I'm not touching Diana's head. I'm going to delete all of these people as well. Like I don't want none of these people in my photo. All right, so just release your click. Canva is going to work its magic, magic eraser, and remove this photo and reconstruct like pixel by pixel what is supposed to be behind. This is pretty bluffing, guys. Now, these people are completely gone. Let's try with these people right here. This is a little bit more complex because you have a little bit of the stairs going on. So let's see how Canva handles that. So I'm going to remove all of these. And there you go. This was pretty neat. So there's one last guy right here. I'm going to remove this guy as well. Wow. So they are all gone from this photo. So now I can just click out of my photo because this is correctly cleaned up. Pretty happy about this. So I can now save this photo. And I just noticed now that my Taj Mahal is gone. So I have applied a new effect, which is Magic Eraser, which sort of replaced the previous effect. So let's try one more time from this photo to apply Magic Edit to see if it works. Okay, so I'm going to just use Magic Edit here. See, it seems like I cannot uh, accumulate both effects right now. If I use Magic Edit, the people are coming back, yes. So this is a little limitation right now that you cannot apply both effects like uh, back to back, but I'm sure Canva will change that in the near future. Or there are some workarounds like downloading your photo, re-uploading it to Canva and then using the second effect. But yeah, it would be nice to be kind of like chain using these different magic effects to really have complete freedom over your photo retouching. But it doesn't take away that these two features are pretty amazing. So well done Canva. The next new feature I want to talk about is called Translate. And this feature will help you translate anything that is text-based in your design into any of the 100 plus languages that Canva can deal with. So let's try it out. I have the perfect template right here that I prepared for you. So let me zoom in on it and let me uh, collapse this panel for now. So this is my template. It has a bunch of different text boxes. Okay, a call to action, a website and four little text boxes right here. Time to relax, time to travel. Okay, I mean the traveling mood recently. I don't know why. All right, so where do you find Translate? Well, Translate is going to be tucked under your apps right here. So you need to click on apps and then you scroll down a bit and you should see a button right here that says translate. So click on that. So the first thing I want to say is that you have two different tabs. So make sure you check the settings once you are pretty good to go with the first menu right here, the first part of the UI right here, I would say. The first box is translate from. So you can let that to automatically detect, especially if you're working in a language like English, because it will know what it is. But you can specify which language your origin language is in, okay? And then you can choose which language you want to translate to, okay? So this option right here. I am here in Barcelona, so I want to try Catalan, okay? Catalan is the language spoken here in Catalonia. Apply to page, okay? So I can select different pages of my design. I only have one page here, so I'm just gonna select page number one. Now, translate. Canva is gonna run its magic, create another page. You see, it created another page with 
every single text boxes translated into Catalan. I didn't have to select any specific text boxes. It just recognized all of the text on my design and translated it. Also, it didn't translate the URL because it recognized this is not something that needs to be translated. So I think this was a very smart translation of my design and by reading it, not fluent in Catalan by any means, but this sounds about right. Now, one way to know if this is right is to translate it in a language I actually understand, which is probably something I should have done from the beginning, but just to pay tribute to the people of Catalonia, wanted to respect that and translate it to Catalan. All right, so let's do this one more time. Uh, translate this into French. Okay, French, please. Page one, yes, let's go. So supposedly it's going to be creating a third page. Yes, it did. Where is my page? Oh no, it actually added my page in between the two other pages. So what is the original text? Time to relax. Temps de se détendre. Yep, temps de voyage. Yep, I would say temps de voyager instead because travel is like the verb to travel, voyager. So this is almost perfect, I would say. Temps de voyager would be uh, better. Okay, temps de voyager. Let's add R to this little thing right here, like so. Okay, temps de se détendre, temps de voyager. Réserve maintenant, yeah, this is correct. Yeah, perfect. This could be a little bit more centered, but overall, this is a very good feature. This is going to save so much time, especially if you're working with different audiences, different locales, if you often translate your design, or just like us, if you have different YouTube channels in different languages, different Instagram accounts in different languages, this is going to be a time saver. Also, this is a free feature, so available to all users, free and pro, and also available on every device, mobile, desktop, it's everywhere. So thank you Canva for this amazing international gift. Let's continue to explore these magic AI features from Canva. And this time we are going to look at a specific feature that is going to be awesome for making videos. This one is called BeatSync. BeatSync will allow you to skip the manual editing when you're making videos and match your video footage with a soundtrack with the click of a button. So let me show you how it works. <laughs> That was an amazing video. That's actually the one Canva showed at Canva Create. Now I kind of want to try it myself. So let's jump into a video project that I pre-arranged for you and try it out. So what we are going to do is to use one other project that I have created right here. So this is a video project. You see different video clips right here on uh, this project that I have laid out. Okay, so there's a bunch of different video clips here. Some of them are repeated and some of them are just like text, get moving. So this is just a couple of clips I have aligned. There is no soundtrack as of now. So I'm going to start by finding a soundtrack. So you can upload your very own piece of music or you can find a soundtrack in the Canva audio library, which is what I'm going to do right now. Let me just close a couple of things here. Yes, yeah, so for this, you can go to your apps, and then find the audio. Now, this is a pro feature, so meaning if you are going to use this, you will also have access to all of the pro soundtrack in Canva. I'm gonna be using this one right here, Hushed, which is a hip hop beat. I'm gonna click on it, and Canva is gonna position it on the timeline right here. So with the track selected, I'm gonna click on Beat Sync, but before I do, I'm gonna show you what it looks like without syncing. <gasps> Okay, so what you notice is that the images, they're not perfectly synced with these little beat drops, like with these little white marks here on the audio. They're kind of aligned, but not perfectly aligned. And especially here, when we start going further down this timeline right here, we see they're not aligned at all. So what BeatSync is going to do is to realign all of that. So let's turn this on. Okay, now it's kind of perfectly aligned and let's see the difference. OK, 
Okay, so I could see here really the effect of BeatSync helping me, assisting me in really changing the visuals based on the changes that I can hear in my soundtrack. This quite hard to explain really what it does with words because it's something you kind of have to listen to and feel to really have a good feel of what it can do. But here I really noticed that my audio track was synced with uh, the changes of the visual. So this is BeatSync. Again, it is a pro feature. It is kind of magic because it is AI assisted in order for them to kind of recognize the peaks in the music, in your soundtrack and to align, to create a market marker and then to align your footage on the timeline with these markers. So that's my interpretation of how it works. And for having edited a lot of videos myself, syncing your footage to a beat is something pretty hard. Like it's a very tedious and manual process. Now with beat sync, it makes it a lot easier. This will work in video document types and also social media document types. It might not work in your presentation and other document types at the moment. So thank you Canva for beat sync. The next magic feature I want to talk about is called Draw. Okay, this one is a revamp. It is an improvement of the Draw feature, which was an app. Now it's kind of like right there in the object panel. You have access to a series of different pens that you can use to hand draw, hand sketch on any document type. For those craving just a little extra sprinkle of magic, Here's a taste of what else is to come. In the next few months, you'll be able to use Straw's sketch to graphic mode to sketch out ideas and find your perfect graphic match from the Canva library. Getting from scribbles to slick visuals has never been so magical. This is pretty cool. Let your ideas take a shape, try it out. So I'm gonna try it out in a Canva whiteboard document. Okay, I have a test whiteboard document right here. Let me collapse this. So yeah, this is our whiteboard. Let me zoom out slightly. Okay, it's called our new awesome app. And you can see a wireframing here of this app, different workflows. I didn't create that. This is a template uh, in that whiteboard. All right, so how does it work? The draw feature should be right there in your object panel. So when you click on it, you have three different pens. You have one eraser. You have the possibility to come back to your cursor. I will show you why in a moment. You have a color button and then a drawing settings. Okay, and you can collapse that panel back into the object panel. So let me show you how it works. I'm gonna take this first pen right here, gonna customize the color. So you have access to your brand kit colors right here, which is quite cool. Let's take that color green right here. And immediately you can start drawing on your whiteboard. So you see right here, if you don't like that, you can just get the eraser and erase that thing. Okay, I'm gonna use a different marker, this one right here. And this time I'm going to choose a different weight for this marker. Okay, I'm gonna draw in size 20. Let's do something like this. Our new awesome app, something like this. I don't quite like the three little sketches I made on this side. So I can, again, easily, very easily delete them with the eraser and try again until I get them right. Something like that. I can underline, whoops, this was not so good. Again, eraser, erased, that's it. I want to change the color, very easy. Can take this pink, for example, and then I can do another underline. Not good, not satisfied, no problem, you can erase. All right, let me show you what happens when you click on this little cursor thingy right here. Now you can select any of these sketches you've made and you can change their color one more time, okay? Something like this. You can select the three of them, change the color of the three at the same time. So this is pretty cool. Again, here, select all of them, change them at the same time. Something else you can do, you can group them. I'm holding my shift key right here and I'm just selecting all of these little doodle I made here. And so what I can do is to simply group all of these together. See, group right here. And now I have this one doodle simply grouped together and I can change the color of all of them at the same time using my color button. So this is 
pretty cool. But that's not it. You can do more with your draw button because there is something called shape assist. Let me show you how that works. Let me grab my pen again, this pen right here. Let's say I want to draw a rectangle around one of these uh, phones right here. So I'm going to draw my basic rectangle right here. I'm going to do so and keep my cursor right here. And you see what happened? It created a more perfect rectangle. It's not perfect. It still has this vibe of hand-drawn elements. You see the corners are a bit rounded, but it is much better than the ugly rectangle I drew. So again, you can select that rectangle, move it around. You can resize it. You can uh, stretch it from one side. It's really cool. It, it transforms this element into an editable element that I can use, that I can rotate, I can change the color. I can also scale it. This is still looking good. You see like the straight line, the resolution of this thing is pretty amazing. So yeah, this is basically in a nutshell. And the shape assist will work with a bunch of different shapes. It will work with a circle, for example, like so. See, this is not a perfect circle, but it kind of respects what you try to do. It will work with a star. Like so, it will work with a line. There you go. So basically straightens up anything that you do create. Now, the last thing I want to show you is the highlighter. So if you want to highlight a piece of text, for example, and this will work in every single document type or almost all of them. It is a free feature. So all users will have access to this and it will also work on every device. Now, the only thing I haven't tested yet is does it work with a pencil, like an Apple pencil for the iPad? I suppose it would. So that could be a very useful thing for taking notes, for example, though I think there is a limit to how many elements you can draw with this on one single document. So maybe not so great for note taking yet, but definitely great for enhancing your designs, for drawing over a photo, for highlighting text in a presentation. And this is what I want to show you right now. Like how do you highlight text? Well, very simple, you choose the right uh, highlighter. This is not big enough, so I'm gonna delete this. I need a much bigger stroke for this, so let me grab my highlighter. And here, let's say, I want something 65. Now this, yeah, this is much better. You see, I'm highlighting this. I'm gonna use my cursor right here, select it. You see, I'm selecting the yellow highlight and then position, I'm going to push this backwards. So it is now actually behind my text. So my text is still kind of like crispier because that black color is on top of the highlighted part, which looks uh, absolutely great. All right. So this is what I wanted to show you. Again, you can find it right here under the object panel and the draw tab. You have all of these features and it is pretty amazing in my opinion. All right, let me talk about another pro feature that is going to be hitting your Canva accounts. Should be there already. It is called Magic Replays. Again, pro feature. This one is going to save you a bunch of time, especially when your company or your brand gets a new logo, or if you want to quickly replace one specific element in a series of different designs. So that's why I used the example of a logo, because yeah, when a company does a logo redo or makeover, then you have all of these documents with your old logo. You kind of need to change them one by one or you need to recreate your invoices, your whatever document using the old logo. So Canva has just shipped a new feature to do that very conveniently, very easily. So you will need to go to your brand hub. OK, you will notice that the brand kit is now called the brand hub. And I will talk about that in video number two, not this one. This one is about all the AI stuff. So go to your brand hub, select a specific brand kit that is kind of affected by this change. I'm going to go to Team Rondi, OK, our main brand kit. Let's say we are ditching this old logo and replacing it for this one without a background. OK, so what you will do you will select the three little dots right here on your old logo or the old photo. This will work with photos as well. I don't have any photos in my brand hub, but if you do, it works with photos as well. So click on the three little dots and then replace across designs. This is the feature. It's still in beta. So when you click here, it will find all of your documents. Here I only have four, which contain that specific logo. 
for that specific image. And once you have this information, once Canva has generated this list of different documents, you can select all of them, select them all, and then hit the continue button. And this will allow you to replace that logo for another one. Now there is a little condition attached to this is that the new logo needs to have the same aspect ratio as the old logo because it needs to fit perfectly in all of these designs. Okay, so here I have this logo, same dimensions 5000 by 5000. So if I select it and then go ahead and click preview, I think I can do that, preview. Canva will show me in my different documents what it would look like, okay? The replacement of the old logo by the new logo. You see, it's right here on page number 10. And if I'm happy with this, I could just hit this button right here, replace in the four designs, and then all the old logos will be gone and the new logo will replace them. So that is magic replace. Again, it's a pro feature. It will work with both logos and images. So go ahead and try it out, especially if you are kind of like brushing up your visual identity. This is a real time saver. The next new feature we need to talk about is called Create Animation. Create Animation is one of the gifts that was unwrapped at Canva Create, and it is right here. So let's click on that tile. It says, make your own animation. Now this feature, which will work with any video document type or social media document type, will allow you to position an element on your design, then grab that element and with your mouse, just draw a trajectory, a path, and this path will be automatically recorded. And then after that, Canva will generate an animation just following this path. This is pretty amazing. The good news is that Create Animation is a free feature. Yes, you heard correctly, it is a free feature. Canva could easily have put that into the pro category, but hey, I guess they must love their users a lot because this is a free feature and it is a powerful one. Let me show you how it works. I do have a document right here to show you right here. Once you do have your element, could be a still element, an animated element like this bird, click on it, then click on the animate button. And then here on top, you should see create an animation drag elements around the canvas to create your own animations, okay? So a couple of guidelines, uh, you can hold your shift button, your shift key while dragging to create straight lines if this is something you want to do. You can control the speed of your animation by moving the element faster or slower, also pretty cool. And then when you stop dragging the element, you complete the animation. So I'm gonna click on it and there we go. Let's go creating this animation, all right? So this is what it looks like, accelerated here, and then the bird comes here. Now it is done. I have a couple of options, like movement styles. I can go from original, so this is the original one. I could go smooth, everything will be smoothened up. Or I could go steady, which actually looks better. I'm gonna stick with steady. I can also toggle this slider right here that says orient element to path. And for the bird, this will look very cool because it will kind of do some loopings right there. So this is great. I can also adjust the speed of the animation. All right, I'm gonna stick with this. This is great. I'm gonna click on done. And now I do have my animation going on. If I go full screen right here, this is what it looks like and I have created an animation in the simplest way possible, like no keyframes, no like setting a bunch of numbers and creating different layers. No, this was as simple as it gets, like in pure Canva fashion. I really love that feature. I think it's gonna be magic and it's gonna work with a bunch of different applications. This also works with text. Like you could take a text box. Let me grab a text that is bigger than this. This text right here, I can delete this one. Uh, what it says doesn't really matter. Let's put animate. Let's make this all caps like so, make it bigger. Okay, so I'm gonna take this text box, bring it here. And again, I'm just gonna go to animate, create animation. This time I'm gonna create these straight lines holding my shift key. Okay, so going from here, and then doing these little step thingies going on and then coming back to the middle. So obviously this is not a great animation. I did whatever when I was holding that animate text. So I'm gonna delete this path and try to do something a bit better. Okay, so I'm gonna go from here to here. 
fast. Yeah, this is actually much better and I can do smooth like so. Let's try this. Okay, now I could play with this. I could animate this again. So custom, yeah, okay, I'm gonna delete the path and I'm gonna try again. So again, animate, create animation. I'm gonna hold it, hold my shift key and I'm gonna start moving like so much faster. Okay, let's now see this. This is pretty good. Let me go click on smooth and then done and then full screen and see. And no, I guess steady would be better. Okay, no, steady is actually not better because we are losing. Sorry, I'm learning as I go here but original is going to be much better in this case. So yeah, I think if I want to keep the speed, yeah, I need to stick with my original path. All right, so this is called create animation. I think a lot of creativity is going to come out of this feature, playing around with text, playing around with elements, playing around with maybe background switching. And again, it's free and available on all devices. The next AI feature that was announced at Canva Create is Magic Write Everywhere. Okay, you, we already knew Magic Write in the Canva Docs. So that is Canva's text generation AI tool that was only available in Canva documents, but now it is available in all Canva doc types. And I'm talking about websites, I'm talking about social media documents, talking about presentations, anywhere we really need it. So let's try it out. I do have a whiteboard right here, so yes, Canva Write is also available in Whiteboard. So yeah, in order to launch Canva Write, you will have to locate this little Canva Assistant right here, which is also a new feature, which I'm going to talk about in video number two, because we can only do so much in a video. So click on the Assistant, locate Canva Write. Okay, so show more. I want Canva Write. Obviously, it's not showing because the photo is selected. So make sure you're not selecting a photo. Then Magic Write should be right here. And I'm going to prompt uh, describe the Mona Lisa in three simple paragraphs. Okay, describe the Mona Lisa in three simple paragraphs. I'm going to give Mona Lisa capital letters. Okay, Mona Lisa. Hit enter. Magic writes will create my three paragraphs. One, two, three. Okay, I'm going to just adapt this text right here to my document right here. So the Mona Lisa is a famous portrait painted by Leonardo da Vinci in the early 16th century, blah, 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 blah. So there's a bunch of information about the Mona Lisa, okay? So that is magic, right? Is that good? Yeah, it's pretty good. It's kind of like ChatGPT within Canva. So that is pretty cool. Is it fast? Yes, it was pretty fast. Is it free? Well, yes and no. Free users will have 25 prompts lifetime. So you can try this for 25 five times before you kind of have to pay for it via the Canva Pro plan. Okay, Canva Pro users will have access to this. I believe you have access to 75 prompts per user per day. But yeah, you can try it 25 times for free. Now, another novelty that was announced at Canva Create is when you hit the little Canva Assistant again, you have a bunch of preset prompts right here. You can summarize the text, you can expand on the text meaning develop and create more than three paragraphs. You can rewrite or you can edit with magic write, which is pretty cool. So let's try first summarize this text. Okay, so I'm gonna summarize this and normally, yeah, there you go. Uh, let me write this bigger. You should have less text. Well, I made it bigger, so it seems like there is more. I can summarize again. So I should have less and less and less text. So let's summarize one more time to see how small it could get. Now, the Mona Lisa is a portrait painted by Leonardo da Vinci depicting a serene looking woman, blah, blah, blah. So it's still like very accurate information, but with these simple prompts right here, just have to select it then hit the assistant and summarize, expand, rewrite, or edit with Magic Write. Now let me show you something else that you can do. I'm gonna edit with Magic Write. So I have this text right here. Now I can ask it, I'm gonna hit my shift key, so I'm not launching the prompt, okay? I'm going to put some brackets here because I want Magic Write to rewrite the following, but uh, make it rhyme. 
rewrite the following, but make it rhyme. I'm gonna hit enter and let's see what it comes up with. Leonardo da Vinci brush did paint a portrait, now a great acclaim. Mona Lisa, a serene dam, here, name was Lisa, just the same. Her smile is much debated still, but subtle color and light do feel. This masterpiece of Renaissance skill, iconic image, Western cultures thrill. Okay, so it does rhyme. It is pretty impressive. That was lightning fast. And I love having this AI text generator right there, straight into Canva. This is going to be so useful for creating websites. For example, I have this headline right here, which is my hero headline. I could launch the assistant very quickly and then, for example, summarize this text. The favorite have returned, okay? Something else we can do here on page two, if I move this button down a bit, kind of want to expand on this one, I'm gonna ungroup. I'm gonna click on this one, find unique tees designed by artists from all over the world. Okay, I want to expand this a little bit. Expand, let's see what it can do. Discover unique, okay, that's a bit too much, but I do have the choice here, discover unique, one of a kind t-shirt, support artists. So it gives me a list of features that I could easily work in my page right here. Maybe not all of the 10, but I could use maybe one, two, three and have something like this right there. I should obviously style this to match, for example, this right here, copy style, you can copy the style right here and still keep my dot points. Okay, so I could have something like this, could make this maybe a bit smaller and give it a little bit more spacing between the lines. But yeah, I have generated copy for my website in an instant. Also, Artist Hub, if I'm not happy with this, I could also rewrite this with Magic Write. So I could prompt it and say, find another funny way to say this. Okay, and I'm gonna use brackets so that it understands that it needs to change what's in between these brackets. Creative commune, yeah, that's not too bad actually. So I could use that, obviously a little bit of tweaking the arrangement of the text right here. But yeah, this is in a nutshell what it can do for you when it comes to website. Quickly create different taglines, quickly expand or summarize text, or give it a special twist based on a specific tone of voice. So most of what ChatGPT can do, but right here, baked into Canva. So that is Magic Write. It is available for free for 25 times, so you can try it across all document types, and then it becomes a pro feature. All right, let's move on to the next new feature. The next new feature is called Magic Presentation or Magic Design within a presentation. So it is this tile right here. I am here in a presentation document type. When you click on it from your presentation, it says describe the presentation you want and we will write and design a draft for you instantly. So what this does is that it will create a presentation, so meaning a template, but also populate it with relevant content, not just dummy content like most of the templates do have on Canva, but relevant content according to your topic. So I'm really thrilled to start this. So magic design, use five or more words to describe your presentation topic. Okay, so I want you to design a, let's say 10 page presentation on the rise of sneaker collecting. Big sneaker head, so let's see what it can do here. So it's creating the presentation. Now it's giving me options. You see, the rise of sneaker collecting a fashion phenomenon. So this is one of all of the templates I could go for. So there are like different template styles and my style. Okay, so see more, I could see more styles and I can see that it has already populated Kind of like it created a title, introduction statement, the history of sneakers, what makes sneakers collectible. Okay, uh, sneakers are more than just shoes, they're a cultural phenomenon that reflects our individuality and creativity, the culture of sneaker collecting, most expensive sneakers ever sold, the future of sneaker collecting, tips for starting your sneaker collection. So this content is actually very relevant. I could choose different templates 
to start with, and these are pretty amazing. So I'm gonna create my presentation from one of these templates. And now all I have to do, I have my base. I don't need to start from scratch. I do have a base with placeholders, etc., etc. I could start ideating on this. I can start adding my own photos. I could go to my elements and type sneakers and filter by photos. And I could just drop some sneaker photos in there and adjust them and really play around with this. I do have a great base to work with. And that has been created in a couple of seconds. So if I click on all of them, I can see I have 10 pages filled with relevant content. Not all photos are relevant, but I mean, I can do something to create my presentation. But I do think this is going to make a lot of people's lives easier because the text that has been generated gives us a nice starting point. By no means, I am saying to just generate presentations like this and that's it and present it. That would be stupid. But this is a great way to start to have ideas and you can regenerate these presentations from the beginning. So Canva will give you some other ideas and just like any other sorts of AI, today is the day this technology is going to be at its lowest point. It's only going to go up from today because it's only going to learn from thousands and millions of users using the technology. This is going to be available to all users free and pro users and on all devices. So really looking forward to see what you guys are going to come up with using this technology to create amazing presentations. All right, let's stick with this presentation to introduce the next improved feature. This one is not a new feature, it's text to image, but it's an improvement on text to image. Okay, you remember text to image in your apps, you have to find the text to image right here. So this app has recently received and launched at Canva Create a bunch of new improvements. So the novelty is that the app now has three different set of filters for three different types of outcomes. You have filters and styles for your photography. Okay, you have all of these filters for the photography. You have your digital art, Okay, so here again, you have a bunch of presets or filters or styles, and then you have fine art, more like painting, color pencils, etc., etc., ink prints. So I love that you have all of these styles. For the rest, you still have your aspect ratios. Uh, I covered this in a previous episode of What's Hot, and you have your prompt box right here. So let's try it out. Let's take a page here without anything. I'm going to not use an example, but I'm going to type a prompt. So give me a hyper realistic and detailed face of a robot wearing glasses. Let's see. I didn't put any filter here. I'm not sure what it's gonna generate. So there you go. I have different faces right here, a hyper realistic and detailed face of a robot wearing glasses. I'm gonna copy this prompt and now I'm gonna start playing around with the styles. You see, this one was the default one with no styles applied to it. Let's try something like Vibrant in Create Again. Here we go, we have more uh, photos of ladies right here. Let's see what else I can do. Let's go for 3D, create that again. Okay, I like these, uh, specifically this one right here. So let me show you another way text to image has been improved, its resolution has been improved. It now has a four time higher resolution than before. Before, the maximum resolution of your text to image outputs was 512 pixel by 512 pixel. It is now four times bigger at 2048 pixels by 2048. So yeah, if you do the math, that is four times higher. And we can see that by stretching this photo all the way across my presentation here, it does look much crisper than if I had scaled an image with the previous version of text to image. So I love that. I love all of the filters. Obviously, the better you prompt right here, the better the outcome you will receive. So do not hesitate to give Canva some detailed prompt. And we might create some other videos about how to correctly prompt text to image. Let me know in the comment section if this is a type of video you'd love to see. Maybe some shorts with Diana covering different ways of prompting text to image. Also talking about shorts, Diana will be creating shorts almost daily on the channel covering the different features from Canva Create. So make sure you subscribe 
the channel to see the shorts. Check out the short tab on the channel because there's a lot of new things going on there as well. All right, back to the video. I have one last feature to talk about, and this one is called layouts and styles. Layouts and styles is also not a new feature, but an improvement on an existing feature. It is also related to presentations. So we are going to continue our same deck right here. In order to find the new layouts and styles or the improved version of them, you'll have to go to your design uh, tab right here. Okay, locate your layouts and styles right here. Let's start with layouts. So what you'll have here is basically layouts in suggested layouts is still in its beta version. It might look like this is something we had before, but it's actually not. Let me show you why. Because when you throw some new things at a slide, for example, let's say this slide right here, it will give you different layouts based on that particular slide. And if you add more stuff, so for example, if I copy this one photo right here and I paste it here, I make that smaller like so, and I put it wherever, it will actually suggest me some layouts that will make sense, okay? This is a bit all over the place. Let's say I have these three things right here. Give me some good layouts for this, okay? So I could have something like this, for example, it transforms into this, something like so. You see it arranges my slide using a layout and the more elements I will throw at this slide, the more layouts will be suggested to me. For example, I could use some pattern, let's say pattern for my background right here. I could use this, put this position to the back of everything, click back on my design layouts and now see what kind of layouts could be available to me. All right, I could have something like this, for example. I could move this on the other side, and I do have something pretty good to go. I could use something like this. So my pattern has been incorporated. You see here, it suggested some even like more subtle details that would match my pattern. They were not here before, these little uh, graphics right here. So this is how layouts has been improved. The more you kind of throw things on your slide, the more options it will generate for you. So this is where the AI kicks in. Now, styles, this other button right here, also has been improved. So typically you would have your color palettes, your color combinations, and your font sets. But now you have uh, stuff that could be taken from your recent designs, okay? So for example, we could use the style of this website. I just showed you demonstrating magic right. Could just do that and it will copy the style of this, okay? Again, for this slide, could use this specific style. So that is something new. Also, it gives me a palette from the different images included in my presentation, which is pretty neat. For example, this robot right here, it extracts the color palette. So if I want to make that match, I could easily select one of the colors from one of the photos right here. So yeah, this is the improved layout and improved styles in a presentation, all powered by AI. And I think I covered everything, guys. So I'm gonna leave it here because this video was already pretty long. Now, I'm gonna leave you guys with two additional videos because I didn't have time to cover all of the 30 announcements made at Canva Create. The first one right here on top is all of the non-AI features announced at Canva Create. Thank you for watching until the end. I will see you in the next video.